Hello and a very warm welcome to all our friends to our program A Dialogue with History. I am Ashish. Hi friends, I am Mamta. Hi Ashish, how are you faring at your new hobby? Oh, I think I am doing just alright considering the fact that I have just started. Well friends, Ashish here has a new hobby. He is learning to make pots and figurines of terracotta. By the way friends, terracotta art simply means making objects of clay that are fired or baked to make them durable and useful. But why terracotta Ashish? Clay is widely available and has been used throughout history. In fact, terracotta has been so extensively used that it is virtually impossible to find a village or a city or a town without an artisan who works in terracotta, even today. Interestingly, this widespread production and use of terracotta has led to the evolution of innumerable styles and techniques of making them. So much so that even today, every region in every state has its own distinctive pottery and terracotta making styles. These very styles and patterns hold the information of the history of an area to which the clay belongs. Let's have a look. Terracotta dates back to antiquity in India. Excavations of various Harappan sites show the wide prevalence and use of pottery amongst the people of Harappa. The most important and widely used production of terracotta were perhaps the utensils. This is obvious from the numerous pots, plates, cooking utensils, storage and drinking jars that archaeologists have unearthed. This tells us of the high demand and use of earthenware amongst the people of Harappan age. Terracotta, in a sense, is a living art and as a result has evolved over many centuries. The knowledge of both working with potter's wheel as well as firing it was widely known and used for clay material. Images of gods and goddesses in terracotta have been found in every region in great abundance. Some of the fine examples are the terracotta productions of the Harappan culture, Mauryan age, Gupta age and the Tamil deities of the INR cult. Another fine example is the fabled depiction of Bhumate or Mother Earth. We can date the earthenware according to the use of technologies such as the use of potter's wheel. The production of black polished ware, polished grey ware, red ware, etc. The use and availability of clay and techniques to make terracotta figurines and objects is so vast that states and regions have developed indigenous forms and styles. Interestingly, special emphasis seems to be laid on the reproduction of horse figures in almost all regions. This may be due to the importance of horses during ancient and medieval times. Apart from horses, 
reproduction of other animals such as elephants, serpents and birds are also abundantly found throughout India. Of these, the horses made in Uttar Pradesh, Kurja, Jhabua and Bastar regions of Madhya Pradesh are quite popular. West Bengal also has a rich tradition in terracotta. Most of these figures have a ritualistic connotation, though the most famous perhaps is the Bankura horse. Odisha and Madhya Pradesh have a charming tradition of decorative rooftop tiles made partly on the wheel. These tiles have figures of elephants, monkeys, bears, reptiles, gods and goddesses. The diversity of terracotta images and productions tells us that terracotta is a functional art. The variance of design and manufacture of utility and decorative items tells us that terracotta art always occupied a central position in Indian life and culture. The fact that a unique style developed in a particular area tells us that through terracotta we find the shared expression of an entire community. Terracotta art bears testimony to the varied and ancient traditions of its practice in India over five millennia. And it has always enjoyed enormous freedom in terms of imagination and conception. Hey, your hobby has a very interesting history. See, this is what I've made from my own two hands. What can I say? This is for the viewers to see and judge. But I must admit that the talent of expressions of the hands and fingers is truly great. You know, if you have the talent of using your hands effectively, you can make anything out of nothing. And tell great stories too. Care to elaborate further? Sure. I was talking about puppetry. Do you know, friends, that puppetry is an intrinsic part of the history of Indian theatre and it has evolved through many styles. Why don't we show them instead? Katputli or string puppets originated in Rajasthan. originally from the area around Nagaur in Marwad region. The puppeteer belonging to the Bhat community and known as Katputli Bala travelled around to showcase his puppetry and to entertain people. As is evident from the name, Katputli, the top portion or the face of a traditional Rajasthani puppet is made out of wood. Mm -hmm. 
these puppets usually do not have legs, as the lower body is suggested by using long skirts. The puppets generally wear bright, rich, vibrant clothes and have usual accessories like swords, turbans, crowns, in accordance with the appearance and the character that they depict. You can still enjoy a Katputli show and see how these dexterous and multi-talented puppeteers entertain you with the puppets. Another traditional form of puppetry is Putulnach of West Bengal. In this, instead of strings, the puppeteer uses rods. Some of the puppets are as high as one and a half meters. The puppet movements are highly dramatic and synchronized with the movement of the puppet. Generally, traditional religious stories are depicted in Putulnaj. Another unique style of puppetry, known as Ravanchaya, originated in Odisha. As is evident from the name, Ravanchaya is a form of shadow puppets where leather cutout figures are used. These figures are held close to a white cloth screen against a light and shadows are visible to the spectators towards the other side of the screen. Another form of shadow puppet originated in Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu and is called Tholu Bomlata. The leather puppets are about six feet in height and are joined at the shoulders, elbows, knees, etc. Most of the themes of puppet plays are based on Mahabharat, Ramayana and Krishna. Puppetry has been a common and popular form of entertainment in rural India. But now, the art of puppetry has come under serious threat from television and cinema. The traditional arts are hard to be competed with. Yes, but puppetry is being overshadowed by various other media. Only a little patronage can help it survive. Many organizations are promoting different styles of puppetry. You can also support these activities by visiting various puppet shows and exhibitions. Ashish, we now present a report on the great strides of Indian astronomy. Take a look. These structures, known as Jantar Mantar, are a witness to the Indian advancement in astronomy, built as an observatory for studying the movements of celestial bodies like the Sun, the Moon and the other planets. Raja Savai Jaising built five observatories in Jaipur, Varanasi, Ujjain, Mathura and Delhi. These observatories were built between 1724 to 1730 and derived their name Jantar Mantar from the words Yantra and Mantra. Yantra for instruments and Mantra for formula. Jantar Mantar has various yantras known by different names. A huge sundial known as Samrat Yantra was meant to measure the accurate time of the day with half a second accuracy using the inclination of the sun and other heavenly bodies. Another complex looking yantra known as Mishra Yantra was used for the study of the movement of heavenly bodies plotting their path, including eclipses, etc. The two pillars on the southwest of Mishra Yantra are meant to determine the shortest and the longest days of the year. Interestingly, in December, one pillar completely covers the other with its shadow, 
while in June, it does not cast any such shadow at all. Due to the chaotic conditions and the decline of the Mughal Empire, this observatory was operational for a mere seven years. After the reign of the Mughals ended and India became a colony of the British, indigenous work in astronomy declined, only to be revived after independence. The contributions of astronomers and mathematicians like Aryabhat speak volumes about the state of Indian astronomy in the ancient times. Time for us to say goodbye now. We'll meet again very soon. Until then, it is goodbye from the entire team of A Dialogue with History. Bye friends. We promise to meet you again with interesting facts and new stories from the Indian history.